you know it's going to be a good one when the table's out. Hey guys and welcome back to another Tech Tutorial Tuesday and it's no secret that I am a big fan of making object detection videos. I think it's fair to say we've made quite a number of different object detection videos on this channel and so I thought you know we haven't done that in a while so why don't we take a look at another one and you guys have been absolutely hounding me to check out a piece of open source software called Frigate and I know I say that every single time but you guys have requested this a lot so we're finally getting around to it and Frigate is essentially another spin or another take on adding object detection to your existing cameras that don't otherwise natively support it. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna check out what makes Frigate different to those other um, open source technologies that we've already looked at, what makes it similar, and also how to configure Frigate, how to add our first detection. We're gonna do a basic detection, and then I'll go through and we'll show you some of the more advanced features like adding masks, and zones and different objects into the detection. But first, I need to tell you about today's sponsor of this video, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators who want to learn a new skill or brush up on some existing ones. All of their classes are specifically tailored for learning, meaning there is no ads, and they are always launching new premium classes to add to their existing library. You can choose from a wide range of categories and with Skillshare Premium, you get unlimited access so that you can learn at your own pace. I've been taking a Skillshare original class with the one and only Marquez Brownlee called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHD, which is helping me to develop my video making skills to make better content. But they also have classes about Arduino, Raspberry Pi, 3D printing, internet of things and even networking. Skillshare is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription and the first 1,000 of you to click the link in the video description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So before we jump in with the guide, there are a few things you're gonna need beforehand um, in order to, to proceed with this guide. And the first one is you're gonna need um, a Home Assistant server. We're working on, on Home Assistant today, but Frigate does um, work over MQTT, so you can, in theory, use any um, platform that supports MQTT. There are, I'll leave um, links in the description for how to, or for instructions on how to um, install Frigate with Docker without using um, without using Home Assistant. Um, I'll leave them in the description, but we're gonna be using Home Assistant for this guide. And the second thing you're gonna need is a camera that supports RTSP. So that's, this is sort of the first difference um, with Frigate compared to some of the other solutions is that you need a camera that supports RTSP. Previous ones we've looked at, they can use pretty much any camera. You can integrate with Home Assistant, you're able to use them, but Frigate needs an RTSP stream. Finally, or not finally, sorry, thirdly, you're gonna need um, MQTT already set up and configured, so an MQTT server already available to you. I've done an entire video on how to configure MQTT and how to configure an MQTT server in the past. I'll have that linked up here. The final thing is you're gonna need a very, or a pretty decent CPU in order to run this. And I know a lot of you are gonna ask, can you run this on the Pi? And the answer is yes, you can run this on the Pi. But as with all things object detection, it's a very CPU intensive task. So you can probably run it on the Pi, but it's not ideal. Definitely give it a go, and I think you'll maybe manage to do one camera at maybe a lower resolution, but give it a go. Let me know your results in the um, comments down below. But ideally, you're gonna need a strong CPU, and even better than that is if you have a Google Coral Stick. And these are essentially hardware accelerators for running TensorFlow and they'll drastically um, outperform even a top-end CPU. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my hands on one at the time of filming. They are like sold out absolutely everywhere. If you know of one, if you know how to get one, please do let me know. Um, get in touch with me, I would love to get one. But yeah, I can't get my hands on one for the moment, so I'm using a CPU for this video. I'll try and let you know where the, if you happen to have a Google Coral, I'll try and let you know um, where, what subtle changes you need to make in order for the, um, in order to take advantage of that Google Coral. But yeah, so those are the things you're gonna need. Um, and with that said, let's jump into Home Assistant. 
All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to install the Frigate NVR add-on into Home Assistant. And like I mentioned, it's entirely possible to use Frigate as a standalone um, bit of software without using Home Assistant and without using Home Assistant add-ons. So you can install this via Docker and I'm going to leave the links for the in the description of how to do that um, down below so you can install it on a standalone install on Docker if you want to. But for everyone else, what we're going to do is we're going to head over into Supervisor and click on the add-on store. And then in the top right hand corner, we're going to click the three dots and click on repositories. And we're going to need to add a custom repository into Supervisor. And this, um, this add-on, so if we head over into GitHub, you'll find um, and a repository from a, a guy called Blake Blackshear and that is an awesome name um, but this is all of the work done on Frigate was developed by Blake Blackshear and yeah he's done an awesome job obviously with his repository he's clearly a very talented guy and so I'll leave the links for the description in the description for his github and all the the links you'll need I'll leave them there so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the um, the, the repository link from the top, just copy that, head over into Supervisor and then paste that into the box and click on Add. Once that's done adding, you can click Close and you'll see now that we have um, a couple of new add-ons called Frigate Hasio Add-ons. And you're gonna want to click on Frigate NVR and then click on the Install button. Once it's installed, you're probably gonna to want to hit the Watchdog option and then click on the Show in Sidebar option also. And before we start it, we actually need to do a little bit of configuration before um, the add-on will start. So if you click over into documentation, you'll see that it says we must create a config file called frigate nvr, sorry, frigate.yml. So we're gonna do that now. So head over into your code editor, or you can do this in a Samba share, however you like to edit your files. And we're gonna create a new file called frigate dot yml and hit enter and then we need to add a little bit of code into um, this file in order for the add-on to start so what we're going to do is we're going to enter our mqtt details so this is all in yaml code again once again so um, you should hopefully be familiar if you've edited the configuration files in the past you should hopefully be okay here so i'm going to go ahead and enter my um, my mqtt details so it's going to be 10, 2, 11, 153, same as my home assistant IP address. I'm going to type user. So we're going to do MQTT user and password. Then we need to start defining cameras that we want to use with Frigate. So I'm going to type cameras, cameras. And then we give our first camera a name. So I'm going to call this PyCam. Again, I have um, a little Raspberry Pi hooked up with the Raspberry Pi camera just off to the left here that is running RTSP. So we can use this camera as a test. And then we need to um, enter FFmpeg. And then finally, we define the inputs for FFmpeg. So if we enter input, inputs, sorry. And then we define our RTSP stream. So we enter a path and then RTSP. Um, and then I'm going to enter the IP address of my Raspberry Pi running RTSP camera, and that is going to be 8554 Unicast. Under the inputs, we also need to define some roles. What, uh, these are what Frigate calls roles, and there are four different roles. And we'll get into those in just a little bit, but we're going to keep this as simple as possible. So for the first one, I'm going to enter roles, and then underneath, I'm going to enter detect. So that role is telling um, Frigate that we want to use object detection on this camera. You can, of course, turn that off um, if you don't want to, but we're going to start off with a basic detection on our camera. Then underneath that, we can go back out into, um, into the main camera config, and we need to define a width, a height, and a FPS. So we're going to enter width. And this is a 1280 by 720 stream, so I'm going to enter 12, 1280. Height is going to be 720, and then FPS is going to be 5. So the width and the height need to match the 
um, the width and the height that your source camera is. You can't change the width and the height here to what you want it to be. It needs to be what the source is. Otherwise, um, your screen will sort of flicker. It'll show really weird colors. So the width and the height need to match what the source is. The FPS is a little bit different, and this is what you um, want the, the detection frame rate to run at. So it's not um, limiting the frame rate of your camera, it's actually what the detection frame rate is going to be. And if you look in the docs, um, they recommend to keep this at five. They say that any more than this doesn't um, really benefit you in terms of object detection, but it will hamper your CPU performance. So keep that at five FPS unless you have a good reason to do so. And that is all we need for our basic camera config. But underneath that, we need to define a detector. And you won't, I don't think you need to do this if you're running a Google Coral Stick. So that was the hardware accelerator for um, speeding up TensorFlow. But if you're using a CPU, if you don't have a Google Coral Stick like I don't, then you need to define a detector for the CPU. The default is to try and look for a Google Coral Stick um, rather than use the CPU. So if you're using CPU, then make sure you do these steps. So we need to define detectors, detectors. <laughs> detectors. It wouldn't be a tutorial of mine if there wasn't some spelling or typos. Uh, so detectors and then underneath that we do CPU1 and then type CPU. Underneath that CPU2 and you guessed it, type CPU. And I could be wrong on this, but the way I understand these detectors is this is essentially telling Frigate to use two of my CPU cores in order to run the detections. Once we've done that, we can then head over back into Supervisor, click on Frigate NVR, and then click on the Start button. And the add-on should hopefully start up. If you go over into Logs, um, you'll see a lot of output. Um, of Frigate starting and that has successfully started. So you'll see MQTT um, at the bottom and starting detection process. So that is great. If we now head over into Frigate NVR, which you'll see we now have in the sidebar on the left hand side, click on Frigate NVR and you will see the camera pop straight up. So this is kind of um, the main dashboard for the Frigate NVR. Um, and you'll see a couple of things. So we obviously have our camera in the middle. It's called PyCam. You can change that name if you want to. And if we click in there, you will see our live camera feed. So that is what it currently looks like. It's um, running detections on it just now. So this is our main camera. You'll see down here we have show options. And that gives us a couple of options um, for changing the way the camera looks. So if we click on bounding box, that will actually add the box to the, um, to the camera. So you'll see it follows me about as I move, follows me about um, and adds that person sort of detection label into the camera feed. And this is where we see another key difference between some of the other technologies that we've looked at and Frigate. So Frigate is obviously, you can see it's live tracking me as I move across the frame and it live tracks objects. It draws that bounding box as you move. We didn't have to call a service like we've done with some other technologies like, such as DeepStack, for example. So remember with DeepStack, we had to call a service in order for a detection to happen. Whereas on Frigate and Dudes, they are continuously happening. And you might instantly think, well, Frigate and Dudes, they are better because they are continuously running. But you have to consider um, system resources when you're doing detection. So running the detection continuously is obviously going to um, have your CPU um, constantly trying to look for detections and therefore using higher resources um, that you might not have available. Whereas DeepStack is um, running, it, it's run on demand. So um, you're only getting that instant or that spike in resources for that one event. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, that's one of the first differences sort of between these technologies. We also have things like timestamps, uh, motion boxes. So if I, if I turn that on, that will add bounding boxes into um, every every sort of thing that's moving on the display. You can see that there. I'm gonna turn that off because it's um, a little bit distracting. 
We have uh, tank stamps, regens, zones, masks, and mask and zone creators. We're gonna come back to all of those things in just a little bit. Underneath, we have the tracked objects, um, and you can see it's tracking a person, obviously, that's me, um, by default. Any of the objects that you um, track or add to the configuration will show up here, but the default is to just track person only. Um, and we're gonna add to that in just a little minute, but let's go through the rest of the things. So I can actually click on the tracked objects and that will show me a timeline of events for all of those tracked objects, which is quite nice. And once you start tracking objects, those events will show up in this window. If we go back to our camera feed again, so you'll see currently that this, um, the bounding box is currently orange around me. If I try and stop moving for a second, you'll see it turns blue, and that means that the motion has stopped on that particular object. Um, the orange is when it's still moving and Frigate is still tracking it, and the blue is when um, that the, the object stops moving. So that is kind of a basic overview of um, Frigate. If we head back to the main screen, You'll notice here that we have our events button, so that'll take us into um, that view that we were looking at just a minute ago. You'll also see over here that we have um, detection, a, a, a toggle for detection, sorry, and we also have a toggle for clips, and we also have a toggle for snapshots. In the top right-hand corner, you can change the theme if you want light or dark. I am a very much in the dark mode camp, um, so that is, uh, so you can change that up there if you wish. You can also um, use these buttons to toggle clips on and off and snapshots on and off. Be aware here that if you toggle them on here and then you restart the add-on, then those changes will be lost. If you want those to persist, then we need to actually add them to the config file. And that is what we're going to do just in a few moments. So now that we have Frigate up and running, there is one more um, thing that we need to do to get it into Home Assistant. Obviously, we are connected to MQTT currently, um, and we could just use MQTT if we wanted, but Frigate also has a built-in, or a custom component, sorry, for um, integrating with Home Assistant, and this makes things so easy. If we head back into our, um, over into the GitHub repo, again, I'll have this linked in the description down below you'll see that there is a custom integration for Frigate. So if we copy this URL, head back into uh, Home Assistant and then click on Hacks and click on Integrations. In the top right hand corner, click on the three dots and click on Custom Repositories. Then paste in that URL that we just copied and in the type, you're gonna to want to choose Integration. Click on Add and that will add in our new repository into hacks. And that's gonna pop up straight away with our frigate component, and we can click on install. Once installed, you're gonna see that's obviously pending a restart, so we'll go ahead and do that now. And now once it's restarted, if we head over into configuration and then integrations, and we're gonna to want to hit the add integrations and search for frigate. If you're not seeing this, then make sure to clear your browser cache. But if we click on the Frigate install, and then it's already pre-populated with the information that we need. If you are using this on a standalone install so you don't have supervisor add-ons, then make sure to change that to the IP address of the server or host name that you are running Frigate on. Even if it is localhost, make sure to set that as this um, this value here will not work on your install. So make sure to set that to the IP address and then click on submit. And that's gonna add a frigate instantly um, and we can click finish. And then this is now showing up as an integration and we can click on um, either the devices or the entities. So if we click on devices, click on frigate and you'll see that we now have um, quite a few different options of entities now showing up straight into our home assistant. It's all done for us. It's got all the nice little icons um, and it shows us all the information that we need. So you'll see here we have our um, CPU um, speed that it's running at, so the milliseconds that it's taking to run detections. You also see the detection FPS. Um, again, we have our 
uh, our PyCam, we have PyCamera FPS, so that is the, the FPS that we set in the configuration earlier. You can see that Clips is currently turned off, and that is directly um, related, or it's directly, uh, re yeah, related to that, that toggle switch that we had in the Frigate NVR I showed you earlier. We also have the detection that's currently on. Detection FPS again, we have Pi cam person. So each um, object that you add into Frigate NVR, again, we're gonna get into adding more objects in just a second, but each object you have here will show up as a separate entity, which is pretty nice. So you see that was really nice and easy to get Frigate integrated into um, Home Assistant with the custom integration and Frigate NVR. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna configure um, a couple of more objects to add to our uh, Frigate NVR. So perhaps you want to track vehicles um, or something like that. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you how to add some more components or more objects into your configuration. So we're going to want to head over back into our configuration file that we created earlier. And then under the cameras, we're going to want to add some objects. So on a new line under FPS, we're going to add objects. And then we're going to add a track. Um, entity and then we add the objects that we want to track. If you head over into the Frigate GitHub, again I'll have the link for this in the description and we head down into the available object section, you'll see that there are quite a list of, um, of objects. You can also use your own custom objects, you can train your own models, but this is using the Google Coral test data and there's about 80 objects I think. Um, it's very similar to the amount of objects, or I think it actually is the same objects that is available in um, Dudes if you followed along with that video. It's using the same data, this is TensorFlow, um, Frigate uses TensorFlow, Dudes also uses TensorFlow. So you'll see here quite a list of objects. Um, let's maybe search for something like cup. Let's grab the cup one. And perhaps I want to also, let's also grab a mouse. So we can see here, we're gonna do um, mouse and we're gonna do cup. So if we go back to our configuration file and then just add a new line for, um, well, we also need to add person um, so that that is also tracked. So we add a new line called person. Next line, we're gonna do cup. And then next line, we're gonna do mouse. I really hope that means computer mouse and not an actual live mouse, but uh, I guess we'll find out in a minute. So once you've added those, we're gonna head back into Supervisor and then over into Frigate NVR, and you're gonna want to restart the add-on. Every time you restart the add-on, you're gonna want to just check the logs to make sure it's started up properly. I can almost guarantee you that you are gonna make mistakes in the config file. So just make sure to go back over into the logs, make sure it's started up properly. If it didn't, it's generally pretty good at giving you the um, the line that you got wrong. So just make sure to check that. I can almost guarantee you're definitely gonna make mistakes. I've made tons of mistakes while doing this config. So just check the check the logs and make sure to hit the refresh button. It looks like we started up um, no problem again. So let's head back into Frigate and VR. And if we click on our camera again and scroll down to um, tracked objects, you can now see we have person, cup and mouse. Obviously, the so we have a thumbnail saved for our person because it's already tracked our uh, person, which is me. Um, but it has it's just black for cup and for mouse. So now, if we hold up, uh, hopefully a cup, maybe. Yep. So you can see there, it just grabs onto it straight away. It's able to track it across the frame and grab our cup, so that is working well. If we um, jump back out to cameras, click on PyCam again, and now scroll down, you can see it's got a very flattering image of me uh, holding a cup, so that is working well. Let's grab a mouse. Okay, so there we go, it's currently tracking it. Um, and you can see the colors are changing. Um, I think this is um, changing with the different labels, so, and with the motion. Um, so you can see there it's grabbing my mouse. It's The camera isn't really set up to, to track a mouse very well, but you can see there it is getting it. It's obviously getting me and it got the cup very easily um, earlier. So that is working well. Now, um, so if we click into the persons, um, go back, sorry, click onto the, the persons, you'll see that the there's still no um, events being 
um, sort of captured or tracked. So the way we need to do this is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn on um, snapshots and also recording. So if we head back into our code and we're gonna add a couple of new lines once again. And remember earlier I told you about these roles um, and we've got the detect one there. So if we had, so there are four main roles for frigate. You have detect, you have clips, you have record, and you have RTMP. So detect is obviously what we've been doing, tracking and detecting objects across the frame. Um, clips is where you want to save segments of motion to frigate MVR, so it'll actually save clips onto the um, onto home system or onto any storage device that you want. Record is where you want to do continuous recording of um, the cameras so that you can always have the footage available. And RTMP is where you are rebroadcasting e the RTSP stream. You're rebroadcasting um, that stream from frig Frigate rather than opening a new stream on the camera itself. Hopefully that makes sense. And you can use all four of these roles at once or you can combine any of them if you so wish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, the clips, sorry, yep, clips role to our camera, so add clips. And this is gonna allow us to save still images and also um, the recording clips. So what we're gonna do is add clips into the role like so. And then down here we need to um, defined. So the first thing we're going to add is we're going to add our snapshots. So let's add snapshots. Oh, quickly before we add our snapshots, you can also have multiple inputs um, with different roles in the configuration. So for example, if you wanted to have a higher quality stream for doing the um, the actual clips recording on, you could have a, say a 1080p for doing the clips recording on, and then for continuous motion and detection, you could have a lower, um, a lower quality stream so that you're not uh, using up all that bandwidth for something that isn't happening. If we head over into the documentation, this gives you a good sort of idea on um, how to add multiple streams. So you'll see it's got one stream that's doing um, detection and RTMP, and then another stream, presumably a higher quality stream that is doing uh, recording and clips. So hopefully that makes sense and um, that you can have multiple streams doing different roles. If we now head back over and we jump into our snapshots, we're gonna set enabled to true. That just turns on our snapshot, so saving the images. We're gonna then also set, maybe say, let's set a couple of the options. So say timestamp, um, we set that to false. You can set that to true if you want. And then the bounding box, let's say we also want to set that to true. Then we can also set how long we actually want to retain these clips for. So I'm gonna set retain. And then we're gonna set a default of say two. So that'll keep two days. So whatever number you put in there is the number of days that you want to or um, keep these clips or these snapshots for. So this, this will keep these snapshots for two days. And then after that, they will be deleted. You can also retain um, snapshots on an individual object level. So if you want to retain um, person, for say seven days, but maybe cars for one day, for example. You can do that in here as well. Um, make sure to check out the documentation, the GitHub. It gives you all of the various options that you can set. There are uh, an overwhelming number of options available for Frigate, so we can't cover them all here today, but I'll show you some of the, the, uh, the ones that you'll definitely need. So if you want to um, set that sort of thing, then make sure to check out the documentation. So for now, that is pretty good. I think we're gonna head over into Supervisor um, and restart our uh, config again. And you'll see it looks like our configuration started up good. So let's head over into Frigate NVR. And you'll see here, the first thing you'll notice is that snapshots is now on by default. So that means it's storing our snapshots for us. And if we click into the um, camera again, you'll see that it's tracking me. It's easily tracking me. Um, it's handling it pretty well. And now if we head over um, we'll need to give it a couple of seconds just to save the events. You will see all of the um, the items that are sort of tracked in the frame. It gives you um, the sort of thumbnail of them, what camera it was. So if you had multiple cameras, you would see them all here. Um, the labels, so the objects that we're tracking. So it, <laughs> it even managed to get that cut right at the edge of frame there. And then finally the score, so how confident it was that it was that object 
and finally the date and the start and end time. And we can click into any of these events. So if I click on there, it's gonna show me a little bit more information. It says no clip available. Remember, we haven't turned on clips yet, but it does give me the image right in the, uh, in the, in the event there. So it'll, it'll also pick the best image to display. Um, so as the event goes on over time, it'll actually update this image to give you the best sort of image that it found. So there we go. That is um, looking pretty good for snapshots. If we also, um, and these, these snapshots are also saved to the media folder, and we're gonna get into the media folder in just a few minutes. But next thing we want to do is, so we've, we've figured out how to save snapshots, but what if we also want to save the recording? So what we're gonna do is head back into our configuration again, and you guessed that we're gonna add a couple of new lines. So if on the next line down, we're gonna add um, clips. And again, we're just gonna set enabled to be true. And this time I'm just gonna set retain. Um, and again, we're gonna set default of two. Again, you can, um, s different objects you can retain for different periods of time also in the clips. And um, you can do that if you wish. So let's head back into supervisor and then into frigate again, we'll restart. And if we head into the camera, click on the camera again, you'll see it's tracking and I'm gonna put the cup here and you'll see it's tracking that across the frame. I'm gonna move it back. And then what I'm gonna do is actually jump out of frame for a second um, so that it stops tracking and then is able to save the clip. Otherwise, it's just gonna keep tracking me all the time. So two seconds. Okay, so after it stopped tracking me, it's then saved our clip onto our device. So I can go down here, I can click on person and that'll show me all of the person tracked events. So you can see me heading away there or moving. And if we click into that, we'll also get our clip now showing in the, um, the thing and that's playing back. It's tracking me as I move. So that is working well. So that saved a 20 second clip into our um, NVR. And the other way you can actually access this is if you jump over into the media browser, you'll see that we now have a frigate folder created for us. So we click on that and click on clips. And you'll see it's now, um, all of these files are now able to be played back. So you'll see there, <laughs> you'll see me there holding the cup. Um, and you, we can also play this one back. There's me holding the cup, me placing the cup down. So it does a very good job of integrating very well with Home Assistant. Now let's check out the Home Assistant integration once again, just to make sure that's uh, working properly. So if we head into integrations, you'll see that it still has 14 entities. So that hasn't been updated. If we click the three dots and click on reload, our um, new entities that we added after we added the Home Assistant integration has now been updated. So if you click on devices and click into Frigate again, you'll see all of our new entities. So we have the person, we have the mouse, and we also have the cup now showing. So that is how to get the new entities to show up. It's very simple. Um, now let's go ahead and we're gonna do our final one, which is to add uh, masks and zones into uh, Frigate. So for our zones, we're gonna to want to head back over into Frigate NVR. And then this time, if we click into the camera and then click on show options again, you'll see this little bun button that says masks and zone creator. So if we click on that, and then this is gonna give us a little tool that's actually gonna help us to define our zones and our masks. Masks and zones can typically be a little bit complicated to figure out on some other systems because they want you to um, mark out locations on the image, etc., manually. Whereas Frigate has a nice little inbuilt tool to do so. So if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see here that it says um, we have a box for motion masks, we have a box for zones, and we have a box for object masks. We're, the ones we're gonna focus on for this video are motion masks and zones, but if you want to do um, object masks, then you can find that um, down there and you're free to do so. So if we click on, let's start with a motion mask first, and if we click on the add button, this is gonna create a new mask for us. And if we scroll back up to our image, um, we can then start clicking out points on our image and that will draw a mask for us. And we can also um, drag the points out like this to 
uh, better define them. So if we do something like this, um, what I'm going to do is going to let's drag this down into the uh, the bottom um, sort of half of the display. So I'm going to mask out myself just like this so that we can um, get a little bit of a look at what a motion mask looks at. And if we scroll back down, you'll see it's already plotted the coordinates for us, which is excellent. So if we now press on the copy button up here, head back to uh, visual or config. And then we're just going to paste in that information right here like so make sure your indentation is correct like so and then we're going to want to head into uh, the add-on and restart it once again and now if we head back into our camera and we click on the camera you'll see that it is tracking me and um, so what the motion mask does is it's going to stop our uh, or it's going to stop Frigate from looking in that area for detection. So anything that's in the masked area, it won't look for detections. And you might be wondering, well, why is it picking you up right now? Um, and that's because my hand is in the masked area. And if you go down to show options and then we click on the masks option, that's going to show our mask. So you can see my hand is currently in the uh, or outside of the masked area. And if I bring it back into the masked area, you'll see that the motion stops, so it, the, the square has went blue. And if we just give it a second, and now it's stopped tracking me because I'm back in inside the masked area. So that is how masks work, and you can define um, as many masks or several masks if you wish. So that is masks, um, and you can, you can set this option to be always toggled on again in your config. So let's click on, um, let's get rid of that mask and we're going to head back into mask and zone creator and this time we will create a zone. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get rid of that, um, get rid of that mask, we don't want that anymore and we're going to create or add a new zone. So click on the add button and that's going to create a zone zero for us and again you can add multiple zones and this time we're going to create, let's create two zones. So over here we're going to split the screen up into say, um, two um, halves. And if we head down, we're gonna press the add button again, and let's create another one. So this is gonna be zone one. Okay, so we have our two zones now. If we scroll down again, and we're just gonna press the copy button, head over into our config and paste that. Get rid of our motion mask um, from the previous one, so just blank that out. And we head into zones, make sure your indentation is set correctly once again. And make sure to give it a restart. Okay, so perfect example, I made an error in my config. So if we jump back into the code and you'll see I've got an extra um, line there. So that was my fault on the indentation and that now looks good. So if we restart again, looks good this time. And if we head back into Frigate and if we click on the camera, you will see it is now, if we click on to show options and click on zones, you'll see two clearly um, defined zones. So if I sit back into um, zone one, it's picking me up in zone one there. So you'll see that the yellow, um, the yellow sort of box is kind of flickering. And if I hold up my cup, say in zone, uh, the other zone, you'll see that that box is now also um, change of color. It might be a little bit hard to see, but it is there. So that is how to create zones. And now if we scroll down and we click on um, either person or cup, you'll see it's now added zone to the event. So we can click and we can now filter on zones, which is incredibly useful um, for things like doorbell cameras or other security cameras. If you want to track as a person maybe comes near your front door or something like that, um, and then do different automations based on that. Um, again, you'll see that we haven't got all of our entities there. So we can click on um, reload and that's now given us um, a lot extra entities. Click into Frigate and you'll see our zones are now added. So we have a um, an entity for each object as well as each zone. So now that we have our um, zones working, that is looking great. So we have a lot of information, a lot of entities to work there. I'm not gonna cover notifications in this video. We've done an entire video on how to do actionable notifications in the past. So if you want to learn a bit more about how to do notifications, how to use images in notifications, then do make sure to 
check out that video and I'll have that linked up here. And also another video that I would highly suggest that is gonna help you along here is the, um, the guide that we did on templates um, so that you're a bit more familiar with how to use templates and that is gonna get you um, or help you to do notifications. The other resources, the other resource, sorry, that is very handy is if you head over into the frigate documentation, again, link in the description, and head over into the home assistant section down here, you will find an entire section on creating notifications using the frigate API. So if you need help with notifications, please do make sure to check out those other videos. We cover them in a lot more depth than I can do here. And we also, uh, or also make sure to check out the frigate documentation for all of the options. Also in the Frigate documentation is a lot or all of the other options that you can set within Frigate. Again, there are an overwhelming number of options. There's no way I could cover every single thing here. So if you're looking for something, do make sure to check out the documentation. Some very useful ones are the ones on optimizing performance. It speaks about using um, correct resolution as well as implementing masks. We did obviously to discuss and I showed you how to use masks earlier in the video and that can help you reduce um, or improve detection performance because it's not having to look in those masked areas for um, objects. Oh, you can also do things like reducing false positives. You can set minimum scores for a certain object and things like that. So do make sure to check out the documentation. Again, there are tons of options for Frigate um, and you'll find them all in that documentation. And there we go. That's how to get started and install and configure Frigate um, for use with Home Assistant. And like I mentioned, there are a ton of options on Frigate, an overwhelming number of options, so there's no way we can cover them all. But I feel like we did a pretty good job on covering um, everything you would need um, or everything you would want to get you up and started, and then you can tweak it to your own individual needs. But yeah, I'm really excited about Frigate. I can't wait to actually start implementing it in my own smart home. I've got um, quite a few things I actually want to use it for. Um, perhaps we can do a whole dedicated video on what those are and how to set those up. So yeah, I'm excited to actually get started and start using Frigate. But what do you guys think about Frigate? Are you planning on using it in uh, your own setup? What do you think about it compared to some of the other solutions that we've looked at? Do let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear, uh, as always, where you guys are actually using all of these different technologies that we look at. So yeah, please do let me know. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and get subscribed if you aren't already. And I will see you in the next video. Can I reach it?